Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and on this channel, we post reaction videos each and every day. So if there's something you guys want us reacting the uh, react to, make sure to give us a link in the comment section, and we'll actually do it for you guys. We've got a Patreon called Fanny and Jesse. You guys can feel free to become members and. We'll appreciate we've got a second youtube channel called funny and jesse 2.0 you guys can hit the sub can hit the subscribe and enjoy our weekly content we've got a podcast called diving in with funny and jesse and we have some amazing conversations of which i think you guys don't want to miss you can find us on itunes podbean spotify this channel or our second youtube channel a big shout out to the person that suggested this Thank you very much. And so today we're going to be reacting to shocking, I can't read, shocking statistics of historic rebellions. Without wasting time, let's get into the video. Now, June 30th, 1789, the Battle of Isley, the Moroccans. How many French died? 27. How many Moroccans? 800, according to French sources. God only knows how many actually died. The Battle of the Pyramids, how many died? 27 French. How many Mamluks died? 27,000. I'm not giving you the civilian deaths. According to Napoleon's lieutenant, he said Napoleon weeped tears when he saw the Mamluks charging with their swords against his cannons and gunfire as he mowed them down. He wept tears and he turned to his lieutenant and he said, this courage you will never see on the battlefield again. This is the Mamluks that were defending Egypt. These people were not cowards. They were not cowards. But the world had changed and they hadn't changed with it. The Indian rebel and the Sepoy were, these were the Hindus and the Muslims, 300,000 soldiers that were working with the English, Muslims and Hindus together. The Sepoy rebellion, because remember, the first major corporation in human history is the East Indian Company. This is the first major corporation. This is the beginning of the corporate empire. India was run by the East Indian Company. It was a private enterprise and they used British soldiers to, to do it all for them. Most of the people in parliament had stocks in the East Indian Company. So they were, they were making a lot of money. I mentioned Lysistrata yesterday. Lysistrata, one of the men, when, when the plan was to stop giving their men any nighttime pleasures to end the war, one of the people in the place says, it'll never work. The senators are making too much money selling the weapons, right? So this is an old story. The Indian Rebellion, they say it occurred because the British introduced shorts and the Muslims and the Hindus considered it to be against their dignity to wear the shorts. The other story, and this is where we get the term bite the bullet, they use lard and beef to actually lubricate the bullets. And so the Muslims had a problem with the lard and the Hindus had a problem with the beef. So 300,000 of these sepoy, they had a major rebellion. And it was encouraged by the Shah, the Mughal Shah, who was now basically a titular head. He no longer had power. They actually kill his family and exile him at the end of this. In the Sepoy Rebellion, they estimate two to 10,000. There were only 50,000 British soldiers running India. They were running it with 300,000 Muslim and Hindus. They, they, the British official claim is that 100,000 Sepoy were killed. 100,000. But this is what they did when the rebellion was over. They tied people to cannons, and this is where you get the phrase, he was blown away. And they literally blew them from cannons. It's estimated It's estimated by a recent Indian historian, and this was in The Guardian, that because of a, a massacre that occurred in one of the 
attacks on a fort in which they massacred British women and children. There were 900, and many of them were civilians. The British were so angry about this that they, that the revenge and the bloodlust rose so high. This, this Indian historian estimates that they killed 10 million Indians over a 10-year period. That's, that's the estimate. And it's, it's, even though it's controversial, it's taken seriously in this article because he based it on actual facts, the disappearance of, of many people in their census. The siege of Khartoum, this is when General Gordon, who was leading mostly an Egyptian Sudanese army. There were British soldiers, but most of the soldiers were actually Muslims. And they had captured Khartoum. The Mahdi soldiers came. 7,000 British, but they're not British. Most of them were actually Egyptians and Sudanese, were killed. And Gordon was killed. This was huge headlines in England. Again, they wanted revenge. They estimate 4,000 dead civilians. We don't know how many of the Mahdi soldiers died. The Battle of Omdurman, which is their revenge, is September 2nd, 1898. The British lost 47. Their wounded soldiers, 382. The Mahdi lost 12,000 and wounded 13,000 and 5,000 captured. They mowed them down with machine guns. As they charged, they literally mowed them down. Now, by the 1920, this is the Muslim world. It's basically colonized. Britain is in pink. France is in blue. Spain is in yellow. Germany in green. And I don't know that Italian is, yeah, the Italian, no, that's Dutch. The Dutch got some. The Italians got Libya, right? But then they had to deal with Omar Mukhtar. So it wasn't easy going. The Moroccans, if you study Moroccan history, not one inch of Morocco was conquered without French blood and Moroccan blood being shed. The Moroccans fought a jihad that was extraordinary. Abdul Karim Arifi, the great, and we should clap. These people were defending their lands. They were defending their lands against colonization. Just like if, if, if Canada was invaded and people fought for Canada and died, we would applaud them as well for defending their land. This is the reality of it. These people, Abdul Karim Arifi, the first time that aerial bombing was used was against Bedouin in Libya by the Italians, 1911. This is the first time aerial bombing was used. It was considered perfectly acceptable. They were testing it out to see how it would work. And they literally killed innocent civilians. Again, we don't blame the Italians today. We should have no anger or hatred towards Italians today for what their ancestors did. That those Ummah are gone. And they have what they earned. And the Italians today have what they earned. And we have to get rid of this historical hatred of people. This is a disease in, in human hearts. This historical hatred. It's a disease. And it's a demonic disease because it corrodes the heart. And the Prophet said, I fear for you, Fitan, Yamut al Bedanu fiha wa yamut qalb al mar'i. I'm worried about Fitan that not only kill the bodies of the people involved, but it destroys their hearts. They lose their humanity. This is, this is the world, the Europeans, and Allah, we have Allahumma Malik al Mulk, Tuut al Mulk man tasha. Who gave them this power? Who gave them this authority? This is the question Muslims need to ask themselves. When you were afflicted with calamities you used to afflict on others, you said, why is this happening to us? This is the Quranic narrative. Say it's from your own souls. We didn't oppress them. They were oppressing themselves. Oh, Beware of going against your prophet's injunctions because you will be afflicted by civil strife and great chastisement. Now, we have to deal with the facts, and this is a painful truth. The Ottomans defended the Muslim lands for centuries, but we had many people in the Ottoman that betrayed 
and allied with, with colonialists. This is simply a fact that we have to deal with. The Ottomans fought bravely to defend Palestine. When the Jews of Europe came to Abdul Hamid II and asked to pay off all his debts if they would give, if he would hand over to them Palestine as a homeland for the Jews. This was the early Zionist. He said, it's not mine to sell. And he refused to pay off the debts of the Ottomans, which was destroying the Ottomans. He refused to do that. It's not mine to sell. The, the Ottoman the Ottoman army, which was not just Turks, it was Turks, it was Armenians, it was Palestinians, it was Egyptians, it was Arabs from all over, Lebanon, Syria, they defended Palestine with their blood. If you read that, that, that battle during World War I for Palestine, you will weep tears. They entered into Jerusalem the day after Christmas because they didn't want to offend the Muslim soldiers in their army. They didn't want to offend the Muslim soldiers fighting for them as they took over Palestine. So, Arab-Israeli war, 4,000 Israelis dead, 10,000, they were still fighting primitively. There is clear evidence in the historical records now that the British intention originally was to get rid of the Jews by putting them into Palestine. Many of them were anti-Semitic and racist and they actually thought that the Jews wouldn't survive. And so they thought the Arabs were going to eat the Jews alive. Initially the Israelis didn't have much weaponry, but the Arabs were so disorganized that they lost. They lost the land and they were chased out. 10,000 Arabs died. These are, I'm giving the lowest estimates on our side because people will challenge these numbers. So I'm giving the lowest estimates. In the Six Day War, said because the, the, they were renting from the Americans the military equipment by week. So the Israelis, 880. The Arabs, 20,000. Yom Kippur War, Israelis, 2,688. Again, this is Israeli, this is their numbers, I don't know. The Arabs, again, 13,000. Now we go to the Soviet-Afghan War. If you look at the Soviet war against England, this was one of the few times when the Muslims actually, in one of those wars, the second, there were more Brits killed than Afghans. That's the only time. It's an anomaly because of the terrain and the toughness of the Afghani people and the primitive nature of the... Uh, Alhamdulillah. They were defending their land and we have no shame in clapping for them. But now look at this. 9,500 Russians died. Over 100,000 Afghan soldiers died. 850 to 1.5 million dead civilians. 3 million wounded civilians. Refugees, 5 million. One of them sitting right in front of me. There's not an Afghani alive today that has not lost an immediate relative in war. Not one. Not an Afghani today that has not lost an immediate relative. There's not a Syrian in this room that hasn't lost an immediate relative to war. This is not 0.01% of people. These are human beings dying. Really, you know, people have to, where's, where's, where's people's humanity? You know, where is people's humanity? This is the question. Where is your heart? You know, when you see these things, where is your heart? You know, when people talk about, you know, bravery, this is not bravery, this is mass slaughter of civilians. This is 90% of these people dying are civilians. They're not, they're not combatants. They're not going out on a battlefield to fight courageously for their homeland. These are people that have bombs dropping on them. You know, my tears have dried up because I, I've wept so many tears reading newspapers and studying this stuff. The Israelis in the Lebanese war, 2,688, 19,000 Arabs. The Soviet-Afghan war, 
right? The Gulf War One. Look at this. U.S. 48 casualties to 30,000 Iraqis, 75,000 wounded soldiers, 1,000 dead Kuwaitis. These are people that had mothers and fathers. Many of them had children. And we know Muslims don't have nuclear families. They have extended families. Their cousins are like their brothers and sisters. And then Gulf War One. Now just here, the red represents the people that were aggressing. The green represents the Muslim dead. Just reflect on that. You know, and people say, why are Muslims so violent? You know, they ask us why we're so violent. Maybe they've been driven mad. You know, maybe they've gone mad. You know, maybe that's why they're so violent. The end speech of this, the last sentence is strong, very, very strong. Big shout out to the person that suggested this. Over, over the past few years, I've learned to love history i love how great the ottoman empire was very very great still amazes me to this day and some of these i never learned about and i'd like to look into but i've maybe one two three four five of these i've actually come across or learned about them but this was very very amazing and because i enjoyed this like i said i'm going to look into it because now i love history and i just want to know whatever was going on also like he said the numbers is what these people gave us it's from their point of view not the actual numbers so numbers could have been triple whatever we're seeing on the screen now so yeah thank you for this make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video